Hello everybody, grace and peace of Lord Jesus Christ to you. Um, this is a video to uh, Jesus Freak. And first I would like to say that um, honestly, brother, your ministry is amazing. Uh, what you're doing on here is really great. And uh, you have encouraged me and helped build my faith. And I love watching your videos. And uh, you have encouraged and helped many, many people on here. And you're doing an excellent job of witnessing to the glory of God. And may the peace and love of Christ um, encourage you and build you up in all that you do. But, here's the but, and really don't, don't get defensive, and I, I know you won't, and anybody also who's watching, uh, this is all out of brotherly love, and uh, to help one another, and to keep the the both sides of the dialogue open and and I think it's very um, very wonderful that we can all dwell and dig into the word and go deep into different issues and uh, share one other another's opinions and um, uh, talk about all the various dynamics of the Christian faith that we have um, so First, one of the things I noticed in your hour-long video is you were talking about uh, the once saved, always saved doctrine. Uh, I, before I get into that, though, um, you said that if people don't hear the gospel, they will go to hell. Uh, I'm not. I, I would have to disagree with that. I would have to say according to the scripture, that those who haven't heard the gospel will be judged based on the general revelation that God has given them. And their response to that will declare whether they are saved through the blood of Christ or not. Um, as an example, let us say you have a outstanding debt to the bank. And anonymously, you find out that it has been paid. And you're so gracious of that, and you're so thankful, and you're overwhelmed with joy, and you don't want to get into more debt, and so you 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 stop your frivolous spending because your debt has been paid, and you're just praising and thanking God for for that debt being paid. Yet you don't fully understand who it was that paid it and how. Uh, but later on, you'll you'll um, you'll uh, you'll understand, but right now you're very thankful for it. Uh, you you are saved based on that positive response, just as how we Christians are saved based on our positive response to the gospel. And this is really what Paul is saying here in Romans chapter 1 and verse 18. However, he does indicate that the majority of people don't have that positive response. They go after idols. As, an, uh, as we see here, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godless godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness, since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. For although they knew God, so we, we, we know God innately, they neither glorified him as God, nor gave him, nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools, and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal men, and birds, and animals, and reptiles. Therefore God gave them over to the sinful desires of their hearts, to sexual impurity, for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and worshipped and served created things rather than the Creator, who is forever praised. Amen. So that's dealing with how to respond to people who have never heard the gospel. Now, those who have heard the gospel and reject it, and reject the love of Christ and the peace of Christ, are in continuous rebellion against God, and God is judging them in the same way that they judge others, as Christ, he said. And so, they are judged because they don't want to receive uh, God's love, which is to love those who cannot love you back. And that is how we are to respond. That's how we convict the enemies. Like Christ, he said, if your enemy comes to you thirsty, give him that drink, and in doing so, it will be 
like pouring hot coals on his head that's how that's how you convict them by showing your love because they won't be able to say anything against that and jesus freak i feel you do a wonderful job of that on here when debating atheists and yeah you make your jokes and you make it entertaining and that's all wonderful um so I, i've personally seen this uh quality and attribute um in in you uh, and then, of course, I wanted to bring up Galatians 3, verse 3, for the once saved, always saved. Actually, let's get rid of the verse, and we'll pull it up in its context. What happened here? Mm, okay. Here is just loading up. Actually, let me check my time. All right, I'm doing all right. Okay, so you here. here's what Paul is writing. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you before your very eyes? Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by observing the law or by believing what you have heard? Are you so foolish after beginning with the Spirit? Are you now trying to attain your goal by human effort? Have you suffered so much for nothing, if it really was for nothing? Does God give you his spirit and work miracles among you because you observe the law or because you believe what you have heard? Consider Abraham. He believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Understand then that those who believe are children of Abraham. The scriptures, the scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announce the gospel and advance to Abraham. All nations will be, best, will be blessed through you. So those who have faith are blessed all along with Abraham, the man of faith. And, of course, we have verses like, you started off in the spirit, and now you've ended up in the flesh. And we hear Christ saying, many will say to me on the day of judgment, Lord, Lord. And I will say to them, and, and he, he talks about the excuses they give because of their works righteousness, and I will say to them, away from me, you evildoers. I never knew you. So I personally don't believe in the once saved, always saved. You can definitely fall away. Um, as also Timothy says that in the end times, many people will fall away from the faith, meaning they had it to begin with, and then they fell away following doctrines of demons. Um, then you brought up, you don't believe in annihilation, annihilationism. And um, I believe that this is really where Satan has pulled the wool over the eye of many Christians, repeating that same lie in the garden that we... Um, that we are eternal, that we will not surely die if we disobey God. But we don't see that in the scripture. All over the scripture, the soul that sinneth, the soul that sinneth shall surely die, as Ezekiel 18.4 says. The soul only becomes eternal when somebody accepts Jesus Christ as their Lord and receives the Holy Spirit. And it's the marriage of the Holy Spirit and their soul that gives them eternal life. And... Uh, God will raise them on the last day and then they will move into eternity, whether it's uh, for the, the, the judgment uh, uh, on the, the day of resurrection or it's before that in the white throne judgment where they will reign with Christ for that extra thousand years. Um, and so there's a few passages that really get, uh, you know, I, I see falsely interpreted such as, you know, um, absence of the body and present with the Lord. Personally, I think that's absent of living in the flesh and being present in God's glory while you're living. And your next, also my understanding of that is like if you work a really hard day and then you fall asleep and it feels like immediately the alarm goes off and your next day starts. That's how it will be. We'll, we're, we die, our mind is shut down, our soul goes back to God, and then on the day of resurrection, God speaks to the ocean and says, bring the dead forth, and speaks to the land, and, and gives back the life, uh, the spirit in those people, and, and judges them all at once. Because think about it, if we were all judged uh, immediately after death, what would be the point of the great day of the Lord? And so really... Uh, Christians, we need to start opening up dialogue between that and not hold on to old doctrines and and things that the church kind of set up to keep people oppressed and keep putting money in the collection plate. 
We need to give to God because we love to, because we want to see his ministry, not because we're afraid of, you know, taking people out of purgatory or whatever false lies come up. And so stay tuned for part two.